Welcome to DOS Days, a nostalgic look back at PC gaming from the mid 80s to mid 90s. This is a companion piece series to Player One Memories which covers the arcade scene during this same period. For this series I'll be jumping back and looking at all those great DOS era and early CD-ROM titles that I played and loved so much, as well as the times and places I experienced them. So let's jump on back to 1989 saw the release of Batman in cinemas around the world and immediately Bat Fever hit an all time high, with the Tim Burton directed movie becoming Warner Brothers highest grossing movie ever, with a grand worldwide total of 411 million dollars, not even including video revenues. As gamers this meant Bat games started to fly onto the shelves in rapid succession. 1992 saw the return of Batman to the big screen, with Batman Returns, a much darker version of what came before. It wasn't as financially successful and managed a 266 million haul, but considering the first was one of the biggest box office takes of all time up until that point, I'd say it's a pretty good result. The movie like its predecessor saw an influx of movie tie-in games, 9 different versions were released. Some were simple variations on others, with most of them being completely originals. Which brings us to today's one of a kind Batman Returns DOS release from 1992. Released in 1992 and developed by the Spirit of Discovery and published by Konami who handle a lot of the versions of this game, but not all of them. This DOS version takes a completely different approach to the subject matter and puts Batman in a detective point and click style game with light action elements that are more strategy based than arcade in nature. It basically played to the strength of DOS era games instead of trying to compete with the arcade heavy stylings of many of the console versions. The game follows the basic plot of the movie in that you have 9 days to stop the penguin from taking over Gotham City and ruin his plans of becoming mayor. Batman only works at night from 6pm to 6am so that's when he can prowl around, search for clues or slap up some of the penguins goons. Every action you perform takes a little bit of time so you need to spend it wisely. Your bat cave is your hub. Yeah you can swap out bat suits that get damaged during fights. Equip out your utility belt with whatever gadgets you need from scanners to batarangs to smoke bombs and many more. Some of these items are limited so you better use them wisely. The main back computer itself has many functions from watching live news broadcasts that can give you hints where to go next to evidence scanning systems where you can extrapolate for clues. It has a VHS player to watch found tapes and a biographical database of important people and criminals in Gotham City itself. Everything here is used to help open up new areas of the city to explore and gather more evidence against the penguins shenanigans. You head into the city with the use of the Batmobile and this is where everything happens. Choose a location and start investigating. You can climb to the top of rooftops and make your way around the locations that way and also drop to the street level at any point to investigate other locations. This is usually where you'll run into the penguins goons and the action takes place. Batman fights automatically, you just control his posture like fierce, normal or easy. Each favors aggression, defense or a bit of a balance of both and also at any time you can use items you've equipped to your utility belt to help end battles quickly. If you take out a higher level goon you'll get the opportunity to interrogate him. Information gleamed here helps open up new areas or gains new physical evidence. At any time during the night you can retreat back to Wayne Manor and sleep ending the day. Events around town happen at certain times, so interrogating scum and getting these specific times is very important to moving things forward. It's a pretty interesting mix of a game, completely different from all the other action versions out there and I appreciate that. It's not perfect however, with the action feeling a little bit disconnected and the degree of luck involved with being at the right place at the right time being a bit of a factor. But graphically it really captures the vibe of the 
movie very well, with many of the locations looking just like the movie. Dos Era Music has a few original tunes and some movie interpretations. It's possible at best, but Dos Era Sound was never anything to write home about. Overall, if you're a fan of the movie, it's a must play and it's pretty fun to explore Gotham and the difficulty level is set at mid. This game unfortunately, like many of this era, has never been re-released due to licensing issues, but you can play it on my abandonware in your browser as well as download a file to use in DOSBox and I'll leave links in the video description to that. Overall, it's definitely worth a look for any budding Batman fan. Ah. <laughs>